Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to discuss about the certificates like the self-signed certificates, CSI, and how we can regenerate the certificates as well. So let's start it. So first is self-signed certificate. So let's discuss about this thing like what is self-signed? So the issuer of the certificate. So who is the issuer? A self-signed certificate is created, signed and issued by the subject of the certificate. That is the entity it is used to. Self-signed certificate is used in private networks and it is signed by their own private case. Like you are installing your CUCM, then you can like uh, there are self-signed certificates that are signed by CUCM only, right? Then we have this thing that is CA signed certificates. That is we can say is a trust certificates. So who is the issuer of the certificates? The CA certificate is CA. That means certificate authority, right? So CA certificate is created, signed and issued by a third party called by certificate authority, right? Which is authorized to validate the identity of the applicant. What that means? Right. So this that means there is a forum or kind of something uh, where all these things happens as well. So CA signed certificates have some authorities like um, popular authorities are like this one. Semantic, Digicert, GeoTrust, Global Sign, GoReady and this thing. Right. So these are the trust actually certificate authorities actually. Right. And this CA certificate signed by a public trusted certificate authority which are these semantic desert go ready and interest right and we actually if i talk about any any organization they actually trust these certificate authorities so if any certificate is signed by any of these authorities that means those certificates are trustable right it's, that's why maybe uh, you can see uh, whenever you open any site there will be a lock sign as well on the left side of the uh, url that is a log sign that means it is trusted one right uh, that it is mainly used to validate public websites and these entities are responsible for validating the person or organization that request each certificates talking about these uh, entities that is semantic digicert coded like this and these both certificates include x.509 digital certificates such as ssl or tls certificates code signing certificates and email signing certificates let's discuss about this one the trust one so the main thing is if you are using trust certificate like a ca signed certificate if i can say right so that are trustable right so here you can see the identity of the applicant is verified by a public trusted CA. What is public trusted CA? That the one we just talked about, I code ID and trust, DigiCert. These certificate authorities are trusted by a public, like all organizations trust on these certificate authorities. So if there is any certificate which is authorized by these entities, that means that is a trustable, right? And they need to follow the validation procedures actually, which is stipulated by CA or browser forum. That's why all of the browser, email client and operating system show visual indicators, right? So if we talk about this SSL TLS certificate, right? What is saying? A padlock symbol in front of the domain name in the address bar. That means that is SSL TLS certificate. Code signing certificate, if you talk about, that means the software publisher's name displays on the security window when a user tries to download it, right? And then we have email signing certificate. This includes the sender's digital signature with all the outgoing emails when selected. So now the main thing is why this trust matters actually, right? If, if you are using like a self-signed certificate, that means... Uh, we can say you are actually assuring your own identity. Like you are saying, okay, this certificate is good. This is like signed by me. No one validated it, nothing, right? So that is self-signed certificate. That means like uh, uh, if you just write like I have graduated on a, on a paper and then you are considering it like that is your official graduation, right? That is your official graduation certificate. That means that is a self-signed. You just write it down on the paper and you are saying, okay, I'm officially certified, right? 
like like you may be excellent in academics and all other things but still people are not going to trust you like whether you are certified or not whether you graduated it or not right because this is a self created certificates right so most of the time everybody wants a certificate or a degree i can say which should be trusted by someone like if you are graduating it from any university that means that degree or certificate is signed by a certificate authority which is your university right only then that would be a trustable right so in the same way no browser email clients or operating system are going to trust digital certificates that are signed by entities they are designed to validate right so if if you just open that uh, maybe maybe any any website which is self signed right you you may get an error like this one error self signed certificate or i can say uh, untrusted issuer untrusted publisher like kind of these things right or maybe maybe you can uh, get certificate authority invalid if you accept a risk that it's it's also your responsibility kind kind of these things will be there right so then next thing is this self signed certificates are mainly suitable for internal sites that is intranet sites and sites used in testing environment if your site is publicly going publicly then that thing must be uh, signed by a certif cs certificate like that is certificate authority right which is saying on the other hand are suitable for all public facing websites and software and ca certificate is a must for any website that offers paid subscription or if it is handling tax information health records phi like physical health information or maybe uh, personal identifiable information as well and if you are accepting donation or charity or if you are fundraising it online or as an e-commerce thing like this thing then this thing should be certified by a certificate authority right now the next thing is what's what is the role of this certificate authority b forum for a self signed certificate as well as ca certificate right so if we say in pki public key infrastructure the browser trusts a digital certificate only when it is signed by publicly trusted certificate authority right the browser will trust that certificate only when it is signed by a public trusted certificate authority that means that is ca signed right and if if you want to like uh, uh, gain the trust or retain the trust so your issuing certificate authority must be a member of this forum like we are talking we were talking about godaddy and trust digitus digicert so those entities should be trusted by this one or we can say this should be a member of this cab forum and they need to abide all of the guidelines stipulated by this forum right even even we can say if if they uh, revoke the trust like if they do not follow all the guidelines and if they revoke the trust maybe maybe from a single certificate as well right then your browser have a right to revoke trust from all the certificates that your certificate authority issues and if if such a thing happen happens like the consequences would be uh, i can say we can't even imagine it it's terrible or awful right that's why your all uh, this ca certificate authorities and forums follow all the rules and the guidelines which are actually created by this uh, ca or b for right and if we talk about that self signed certificates those are actually not monitored by this forum right so if there is anything which is happening if uh, uh, something is not right then as of now like this forum is not actually monitoring it that means there would be no penalty as well for a faulty or misissued certificates because that is a self sign and there are other loopholes as well for the self signed certificates that that like well, like your know, criminals or cyber criminals can easily exploit right next thing that is uh, validity dates if we talk about the validity dates your ca certificates have a maximum of 2 years of validity period right although your apple safari browser has one limited to one year yes 
and the other browsers are likely to follow the suite. In fact, free CA signed SSL certificates provided by some non-profits are valid for only three months, right? And these actually, these uh, validation dates and renewal procedures are regulated and monitored by this forum that is CAB forum, right? So let's say uh, if a user has bought a certificate, let's say uh, the five years, let's say for five years, like they have to go through the validation and installation process once again after two years or its expiry date, whichever is early. So that's why it's saying maximum of two years. They can purchase it for five years, but they need to go through the validation and installation again after every two years, right? And if we talk about the self-signed certificates, self-signed certificate also expires, but all the expiration is different depending on the system you use to issue, right? They actually don't really have a specific validity period. You can make it as a like for one year or maybe 15 year as well. Right. So that's why we are saying like you can't trust a self-signed certificates. Then we have the, this thing that is revocation. So with a CA issued certificate, CA has the authority to revoke it immediately if it's misused. That's what we already discussed. You can stop trusting self-signed certificates, but there is really no mechanism in actually to revoke them. Here we are talking about the self-signed. Why we do not have any mechanism to revoke them? Because CA forum is not actually monitoring it, right? Because this is self-signed. No one will monitor. Like, like we had an example. If you are like just writing it on a paper, I am officially graduated. But no university will will take an eye on you whether you are writing it on a paper. Like you are self, you are graduated, right? This is the same thing. And here. If a sales and certificate is misused or misissued, no one has the power to take a disciplined reaction against it and revoke it. So the conclusion would be, if you have a public facing website, you should use a CSN certificate. If you have an internal insights using a testing environment, then you can consider using a self signed certificate. I hope you're getting this point, like when to use the self signed, when to use CSN certificates and what's the purpose of self-signed, CA-signed, and how it matters for the organization internally, or I can say external for the external websites also, right? Now, the next thing would be when to generate, when to regenerate the certificates, right? So most of them you will generate it, whether when it's a expiry or if it's already expired or expiry is near, right? So most of the certificates used in CUCM after a fresh installation are self-signed certificates issued right and that is by default for five years not that this five year time range cannot be modified to a shorter range of time on cucmb these are self-signed and certificate authority can issue certificates for nearly any range of time but the same thing you need to uh, like validate it after every two years if we talk about the certificates in cucm these are classified in two roles the service certificates and the trust certificates so Service certificates, it is possible to regenerate them and are not labeled with the word trust. These are service certificates and every node has its own service certificates. We'll discuss about this one, like call manager, Tomcat, IPsec, all these certificates. And if we talk about the trust certificates, it is not possible to regenerate them. And these are labeled with the word trust. I'll, I'll show it to you on the CUCM. These certificates can be copies of service certificates. This one, certificates installed by default or certificates from other servers. I'll show you on the CUC, right? And now these certificates, the certificates must be regenerated before they expire. If that expires, when the certificates are like about to expire, you will receive a warning in RTMT if it is configured with the notification, like and an email as well with the notification is sent if configured. Right, you will receive the warnings in that ITMT is log viewer. This is just an example of a certificate expiration notification that details the certificate expires on this date on the CUCM2 Tomcat Trust is shown here. You can see Tomcat Trust type on certificate expiration date, and this is CUCM02 as of now, it is showing up here, right? And you need to keep in mind. 
that expired certificates might have an impact on CSM functionality. It dependent upon the clusters configuration and we'll discuss about these things in the next section. Like if your certificate is expired, what would be the consequences of that? And before that, let me show you uh, the certificates which are showing on the CUCM, right? What we discussed in the previous slide, right? So let me just log in on my CUCM and then I'll show you that these things. Okay, so we are here at my lab. Let me just open it. Okay, so here for the for these certificates, you need to go to that uh, that OS admin page where you install or upgrade as well. There you can see all your certificates also, right? So let me just go to this Cisco Unified OS Administration and let me show it to you now. There you can see all the certificates, all the services as well, right? Not the services actually, that is under serviceability. So here you can see, you need to go to this security and here you can see the certificate management. And if I go there on the certificate management, you will be able to see the trust certificates or the service certificates, everything will show up here. Once I click on find, Here you can get all the list of all the service and the trust certificates. And if, oh, what happened? Maybe I lost the connection. Okay, it will come in a moment. Let me try to open it again. Okay, going to OS administration. So for the services I was talking about earlier, you need to click on this Cisco Unified Service Ability and for this install upgrades or the certificate management, you need to go to this Cisco Unified OS Administration. So for that, for the certificates, you need to go to the under the security, you will be able to find this certificate management and under the certificate management, if you want to generate new certificate that is self-signed, you can just click on this generate self sign and you can generate it. So before that, let me click on find and I'll show you all the certificates which is showing up here, right? If you want to regenerate it, you can regenerate it also. Okay, so all the certificates are showing up here. Now you can see these are the certificates, right? The service certificates and the trust certificates. These are the trust certificates which shows this hyphen trust as you can see Tomcat hyphen trust. This one, phone, SAS, and trust, IPsec, trust, CAPF, trust. These are the trust certificates which we just talked about, like this one. The trust certificate and service certificates, you will be able to see this one, call manager, Tomcat, IPsec, TVS, and CAPF. Here you can see CAPF. And if you talk about the call manager, that is service certificate, you will be able to find it here. The call manager. Call manager ECDCA. This is trust certificate. Call manager trust certificate. So we can we can even open as well. Let's let's just open this call manager trust certificate. So here you can see this certificate is opened, and here you can see if you want to delete it, you want to download this fem file, dr file, you can do it, right? So let's go back to our main slides. Okay, so now if your certificates are expired, 
what would be the impact on all other things what we discussed right so service impact by the certificate store it is critical for good functionality of the system to have all the certificates updated across the CUCM cluster. If that is not updated, then you will get so many issues what we are talking about, right? So it's something if call manager dot PAM certificate is not like uh, is expired or not regenerated or something, then these things will occur, right? Let's Let's just read it out. If your certificates are expired or invalid, they might significantly affect the normal functioning. List of potential issues are mentioned here. The difference in impact might depend upon this one. So if the call manager dot time certificate is expired, right? We can say TFTP is not trusted. Fonts do not accept signed configuration files or ITL files, right? So if the fonts will not accept these files, signed files or ITL files, it will not register as well, right? So it, it creates an impact. Font services might be affected if it is already registered earlier or if you are registering a new font, TFTP is not registered, it will not accept the files, then it will not register, right? Secure SIP trunks or media resources, uh, you can say conference pages, MTP, transcoders and so on does not register or work, right? Because you call manager dot time, this certificate is expired. AXL request fails, right? If we talk about this Tomcat dot time, Fonts are not able to access HTTPS services hosted on CUCM not such as the directory. CUCM's web GUI issue. So most of the time, maybe you heard about this thing like your web GUI page is not running correctly or maybe not working smoothly. Then maybe you heard like just restart the Tomcat service. Right, maybe it's stuck, maybe it's regenerate, maybe there needs a G regeneration, maybe it's expired slow, like all these these certificates as well. So mainly this web GUI is related with this Tomcat service. Right? This is Tomcat certificate. But we are talking about if GUI is not working, then we are mostly saying just restart the Tomcat service. Right? Such as uh, unable to access service pages from other nodes. The same thing which I just talked about. Extension mobility or extension EMCC issues as well. If you are using UCCX, if UCCX is integrated, due to security change, it is required to have upload CUCM Tomcat certificate, that is self-signed, or the Tomcat root and intermediate certificate in UCCX Tomcat Trust Store, since that effect finished desktop logins. So you can see there are so many things which will affect if these certificates are not regenerated or expired. If we talk about the CAPF.pem, fonts will not authenticate for phone VPN 802.1x or phone proxy. It can't issue LSC certificates, encrypted configuration files do not work as well. If we talk about this IPsec, DRS or disaster recovery framework might not function properly. IPsec tunnels to gateway to other CUCM clusters do not work as well. If we talk about the TVS service, it cannot authenticate HTTPS service, right? The phone cannot authenticate. And if phone cannot authenticate configuration files as well, and this can affect nearly everything on the CUCM. If your phone cannot authenticate the configuration files and your phone is not registered, it will affect everything, right? Then phone VPN trust, phone VPN doesn't work because the VPN's HTTPS URL cannot be authenticated. Phone Sestrad, previous CTLE tokens are enabled. Font trust, font CTL trust, visual voicemail with Unity or Unity connection doesn't work. So these are the things actually which will impact it. You don't need to remember everything, right? You can just check it out. Like if some if this certificate is down, if certificate is expired, then what will be the impact, right? Now, how to regenerate certificates as well? We'll discuss about that as well. But regenerate certificates in a specific order also. This procedure provides a TFTP server with a valid updated ITL file from a trusted FTP, TFTP server that is available. So what you need to do? First, you need to stop the TFTP service on the primary TFTP server, right? And then you can make changes to the primary TFTP server's certificate as needed, right? And then reset the fonts in order to get a new ITL file from the secondary TFTP server because the primary TFTP server, you already stopped it, right? And it depends upon which certificates are regenerated. This might happen automatically. Now, you have, once your phones have returned, start the primary TFTP server's TFTP service like this one. And then make certificate changes on the secondary TFTP server so that your phones will return to the primary one. Now, reset the phones in order to get a new ITL file from the 
primarily of TFTP server, right? Make sure you do not edit the certificates on both TFTP servers at the same time. It will give the phones no TFTP server to trust and it requires then local administrator to manually remove the ITL file from all, all the phones. So if you work as a L1 guy, maybe in one of your organization, then you should aware about this. If your phone is not getting a TFTP details, TFTP server, nothing is there. If TFTP server is down now for the both, right? Then what you need to do, you need to clear the ITL files. You need to remove the ITL files from the phone by doing it manually. There is no way you can do it remotely, right? Then we have this thing that is regenerate, regenerate certificates via web GUI, right? So regenerate CAPF upon regeneration, the CAPF certificate automatically upload itself to CAPF trust and call manager trust. Also, this certificate has a unique subject name header that is previously used and it is used for authentication. What do you need to do to regenerate it? As I already showed it to you, OS admin, security, certificate management. Find it, click this CAPF certificate and then regenerate. If you want to regenerate call manager, the same thing. The same thing you need to just check out or click the call manager certificate and then regenerate, right? And this call manager certificate automatically uploads also to the call manager trust. Now, Regenerate IPsec. Upon regeneration, the IPsec certificate automatically uploads itself to IPsec Trust. OS admin security, the same thing. You need to find a certificate management, find, click IPsec certificate, and then regenerate, right? These all are the things we already checked it on the CUCM, and even I can show it to you because I just, I clearly, uh, earlier I clicked on the Trust one. Now let me click on the normal one so that it will, you will get the option of this regenerate as well. So in this, if I just click on this call manager certificate, okay. So if we click on this call manager certificate, you will be able to see this thing, right? Now you can see, you will be able to see these options, regenerate, generate CSR, download and download.dr. So when I opened earlier, uh, that trust one, you can see that regenerate, but if I open this one, you can see this regenerate option. So here you can regenerate this call manager dot pem. If I if I just check it out for any other, so let's check it out for this IPsec. As a self signed IPsec, let me click on this one, and let's see what it will open. So this is the certificate. Let me click on regenerate. So you can see it is circling. So maybe it will regenerate it within a minute, couple of seconds, minutes, maybe. So let's let's get back to our slide so that it will generate within some time. Oh, it is generating it. So what it is saying, success. A regenerated certificate for IPsec. Perform a disaster recovery backup. So the latest backup contains the regenerated certificate. Now you must restart services related to IPsec for the regenerated certificates to become active, right? So now we have successfully regenerated this IPsec certificate, right? So let me go back to this slide and move it further. The same thing, this is for remove certificate. If you want to remove the certificates via web GUI, you can just click on certificate within the trust store and you can remove or delete it. We can, we, we actually uh, uh, saw it earlier as well, right? And after regeneration or removal of certificates from a certificate store, respective service needs to be restarted in order to take on a change. That's what we just saw it when I clicked on regenerate it, or if I remove it as well, we need to restart the service. And which services we need to restart? Let's discuss about that thing. So store, if we talk about the Tomcat service, which service you need to restart, that is Tomcat. How you can do it? You can do it with the help of the CLI, utils, service restarts is called Tomcat. Even you can restart the service, okay? Let me show you how we can restart this Tomcat service. Okay, so I am on the putty. Let me just log in. 
Uh, okay, let me log in on the putty. Okay, let's log in and then I'll show you the command and I'll even restart the Stormcat service. Okay, which service? Tomcat service we are going to restart. Let's let's discuss about the next thing so that Putty can log in in the meantime. Call manager, uh, if we just uh, open this call manager and regenerate it, then you need to restart these three things. Call manager, TFTP, and the CTI manager. That you can restart it with the help of this service ability. Going to control center, feature services, under Cisco call manager, click restart under Cisco TFTP restart like these services are under the feature services. So let's me okay. Now you can see that Putty is logged in and to restart the Tomcat service I need to put this command utils service restart Cisco Tomcat. So I'm not pressing enter right now because I will show you these services first on the CUCM. So here uh, I was under operating system administration. So now need to go to the Cisco Unified Service Ability. And there, let's log in. Okay. So here, what we need to do, let's suppose we already regenerated certificate or deleted, we need to restart the service. For that, we need to click on tools and here we can say control center feature services. Okay, now I need to select a server. Let's select the, my publisher. Okay. So now here, what we need to check, we need to restart that service of call manager, TFTP and CTI, right? So here you can see Cisco call manager, Cisco TFTP, and there you need to check the CTI as well. Here where I can find Cisco CTI, this one is Cisco CTI manager, right? So let's click on this one. The service is restarted. What I need to do, I need to restart it, right? It's saying restart service may take a while. Please wait for the page. Okay, I'm restarting it. In the same way, you can select this Cisco CTI manager as well as Cisco TFTP, and then we can restart the services, right? So let's get, get back to the slide. Here, we can restart these services. So after doing everything, I will restart this Cisco Tomcat service with the help of CLI also. So here, the other things, the CAPF certificate, TVS and IPSec, CAPF should be on publisher only, right? And for this one, you need to go to the same feature services, which are under this service ability under Cisco certificate authority proxy function. Click restart. That is CAPF, Cisco certificate authority proxy function. Let me show it to you, the certificate this as well. So this service restarted. You can see Cisco call manager service restart operation was success, right? So let's check out for that CAPF certificate, right? This one here, you can see Cisco certificate authority proxy function. It started and activated. Just click on this one. We can just restart it. In the same way, we have this TVS verification service, but and, and IPsec service, but this TVS service, you won't find it under the feature service. This TVS service would be under the network services, right? Network services and there you can see that Cisco trust verification service. Let's get back to the CUCM and open this network services. This CAPF service restart successful and now for the network services, go to tools and then control center network services. So here I need to select this one like publisher. If you do it on subscriber, you can do that. But that CAPF service would be on the publisher only. Right. So I am under the sys control center network services. What I need to check, I need to check the TVS service, right? 
So let's find it out the TVS service that is trust verification. Here you can see Cisco trust verification service is running. What I need to do, I just need to restart it. Okay, I just restarted it. Then we have this IPsec. IPsec that is Cisco DRF local or Cisco DRF master. So master command would be on publisher. On all nodes, you can use this Cisco DRF local. You can do it with the help of CLI. So Util service restarts Cisco DRF local and Cisco DRF master. Okay, so in the same way, you can do it all these things and let me get back to my putty so that I can restart that Tomcat. Okay, so I just entered Util service restarts Cisco Tomcat. So if you don't know, like what would be the command for this one? Like if I just clicked on Util service, I don't know whether restart it, stop it, start. It. Just put question mark, you will be able to see. Util service activate, you want to activate it, auto restart, deactivate list, restart, start and stop. Everything is coming up here. And now I wanted to restart the Tomcat. I'm entering Util service restart. If you press the question mark here, it will say this is not the correct command. Just put the full command like util service restart. Nothing is fair. Serve mandatory name of the service to be restarted. I need to put it right. So if you don't know what would be the correct command, you can maybe just type. Uh, if you don't know the Cisco Tomcat should be there. Maybe if you write Tomcat only and enter it. It will tell you this is not the right one. You need to choose it between these. Let me just make the screen big. Here you can see I just put util service restart Tomcat. It should be Cisco Tomcat actually. So when you did this, it says execute command unsuccessfully because this command is not correct. Now it is giving you the commands which you can use after this restart. And what we need to do, we need to put this word Cisco Tomcat to make it a restart right so let me just do it cisco util service restart and then cisco tomcat and enter here you can see what is saying do not press ctrl plus c while service is restarting if the service is not restarted properly execute the same command again this service manager is running that's what it is saying right so in the same way you can use this command for this one for ipsec util service restarts cisco drf local util service restarts cisco drf master what it is saying cisco tomcat stopping and if i open my cucm and let me just refresh and now you can see it's saying this site can't be reached until until my this cucm with like I just did a restart and now it is just stopping the Tomcat service. So that's why my web interface is not working. You can see it will not work until this service is restarted. Right now it is just saying this error. If I just try to open it again, it will not open. So you can see it here on the putty. Cisco Tomcat is stopping. I just use this command util service restart Cisco Tomcat. And now it's saying Cisco Tomcat started, right? For this one, what I need to do, I'll go to this one again. Okay, it's already restarted it. Now it's showing me that web interface, right? It will open it once I just do it again, okay? Okay, let me do it again. It mostly do it. But it will log in for sure. It's just I need to close this Chrome fully and then if I reopen it again, it will definitely work. Okay, let me do that now. I just close the Chrome and let me open the new one and then if i just open this my uh, cucm details it will surely open it okay it's still saying this thing let's check it out under the putty it's saying it's already started 
but maybe it will take couple of minutes to show okay let's let's just wait for a moment let's just do it again but most of the time this thing is happening once it's like something is stored in the cache memory that's why if i need to maybe i need to clear the cache or maybe i can uh, open it under the explorer or edge then it will surely open let me let me try to open it under the explorer okay go to this one communications manager it's still showing this thing let's let's i believe then we need to wait for some more time and then it will it will show it to us so that's how you can actually restart these services and here we have this local and master also you can even restart this one if i if i go to this putty so i can restart these services as well if i just put it this one utils service restart cisco drf local you will be able to see this is saying do not press the same thing service manager is running like the same way it was showing for this uh cisco tomcat it's saying do not press this one right this is the notification same notification is coming up over here as well we are like doing this one cisco drf local or if you are using cisco drf master right it's saying stopping then stopping then stopped and then it's like started right in the same way you can use this master command as well right so i hope you have learned something from my this certificates lecture if you have any comments and queries just let me know in the comment section and if you want to schedule a time with me then you can go to this top metro technical venture and these are some of the membership you can you can go and check it out right and i hope you really like this video and if you really like it, then please like, share and subscribe my channel and please press the bell icon so that you will receive notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thank you.